Imagine a database of users and a secondary data set mapping users to groups. In traditional development, there's no way to prove that a user is part of a group without the user ID to look it up. This is where zero-knowledge proofs come in, making it possible to prove something without revealing the data or information about the prover. And this is a hot topic in the blockchain sector right now, with the emergence of ZK rollups and smart contracts that use ZK circuits to create private transactions. In this video, we're going to look at how zero-knowledge proofs work, some applications that use them, and finally how developers can add them to their toolbox. My name is James Puccini. On this channel, I create content about blockchain development and decentralized finance. If you're interested in learning more, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. One of the best analogies I've heard for zero knowledge proofs is the Where's Waldo books. These are American books where there's hundreds of characters on the page and you have to find a specific character. Now, to prove that you'd found that character without revealing his location, you could potentially cut the character out and give him to someone else. That person could then verify that you found Waldo, but it doesn't reveal the information about where you found him. For developers, zero knowledge proof systems are built using circuits. A proving key and a validation key is generated using a handshake ceremony between parties, where various participants contribute to the key. These can be thought of in a similar way to private public key pairs in elliptic curve cryptography. The circuit may have private and public inputs. The proving key can then go ahead and create a fraud proof using the private public inputs of the proving key. The fraud proof alongside the public outputs and the public inputs are sent to the verifier and their validation key can assert whether this verification is true or false. The cryptography behind zero knowledge proofs has been around since the 90s, but it's only really started to gain traction in the last few years because of the blockchain sector and the economic incentive to create new applications using this technology. One of the first things we saw was Zcash, and this was a fork of Bitcoin, but it had the addition of ZK transactions. So there was an option to either do private or public transactions, and the private transactions used zero knowledge proofs to obfuscate who was sending that data. In Bitcoin and other layer one blockchains, it's very open and transparent, and you can see where transactions are being sent from A to B. And that can be a feature, but it can also be a bug if you're trying to have more private, secure transactions. In the last couple of years, we've also seen smart contracts start to use zero knowledge proofs. One of the most popular right now is Tornado Cash on Ethereum. And this is a mixer service where people can input uh, funds and then withdraw them anonymously. So it's kind of, it's mixing those funds together and it's obfuscating who sends in funds and who withdraws funds. So if 100 people send in funds and 100 people withdraw funds, there's no way of telling how they are kind of who sent in what and who brought out what and linking that transaction. And that uses zero knowledge proofs in the background. One of the things that I'm most excited about is the emergence of ZK rollups. These use zero knowledge technology to verify the execution within the smart contracts, which adds the scalability that we need on layer two. So the computation is done on layer two, and then that is proven via an uploaded through proof to the Ethereum mainnet. For developers that want to learn more about ZK proofs and how to use them within their applications, one of the best libraries I've found, the most approachable libraries, is Snark.js. With this, you can create your own powers of Tau ceremony. You can then export that to a circum circuit and ultimately compile it to a key and a WASM file. And you can use this within Node.js or even within the browser. And you can see there's a lot of complexity behind the scenes, but what you're essentially doing is taking the proof and the public signals and turn that into an if else statement where the verification is either okay or invalid. I hope this has given you a gentle introduction to how zero knowledge proofs work, what they're being used for in blockchain technology, and how you can get started using them as a developer. If you're interested in learning more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.